What's going on Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video, I'm going to be going over all my trade talk, what I'm planning to do this week, and what guys I recommend you guys target. Enjoy. So with the trades early on in the year, especially round one, what you want to look to do is use those trades to fix up any possible mistakes. What this might include is potentially bringing in rookies slash cash cows, as they're known as, uh, that you may have missed in round one. So some of these guys would include your James Rowe, James Jordan, Errol Goulden, these types of players. Uh, these guys are the ones that look to make the most money early and therefore they're must-haves in your side. If you've missed out on those guys, they're guys that I would suggest bringing in this week as they'll be vital in improving your team going into the future. The other fix-up trade is potentially getting on some of the mid-priced guys that you may have missed to start the year. For example, these would include your Nick Hines, Oleg Markov, Lockie Scholl, Jaden Stevenson, Jai Caldwell. These types of players that are in that 400 to 500k range that have low break-evens, they look to make a lot of points and money early on. So whilst their scoring output may not be as great as what it was last weekend they're going to generate you 50 to 100k over the next few weeks which is going to help you improve your side in the short term and in the long term as well so these guys are going to generate money and give you the opportunity to get to fallen premiums what you don't want to do with your trades this week is sideways premium players so whilst it is bloody fucking annoying that your premium players come out round one do your dirty with a 60 or 70 score you have to realize that afl fantasy is a long game all right and these players like your andrew gaff jack Steele, uh i'll get into the rucks in a minute taylor adams these sort of guys are proven premium players that come season end will be around the top eight midfield mark. So if you've got one of those guys, there is no point in trading them this week. You want to keep those guys in your side and they will come good at some point. So you want to focus on bringing the rest of your team up because if you trade those guys now, you'll inevitably use a trade later to get them back. And doing that may, means you've burnt two trades on what is a set and forget type player, okay? Now, if we talk about the rucks quickly, if you've got guys like Gorn or Grundy, then I think you have to hold as well. So if you'd listen to my preseason advice, then you most likely wouldn't be in this position. But for those that do own Gorn and Grundy, there's a couple reasons why you need to keep them. The first one being is you bought these guys in at the start of the year as set and forget players, meaning you weren't expecting to trade these guys at any point in the year, bar them getting injured or suspended. Whilst it does look like rucks this year are going to see a decrease in points, one round of data is not enough to go out of your way to get rid of these guys early. The other thing that you have to consider is that all teams or most teams in the top bracket, say top 100 coaches, have Flynn in their ruck, okay? So having a Gorn slash Grundy or both enables you to have that difference and therefore if something was to happen to Flynn or he was to score poorly 
then you'd have an edge over these top coaches. If we go into a few other players that I recommend holding on this week, one of those would be Jordan Degoe. A lot of people are getting carried away with Jordan, but for those that have him, you picked him for a reason, okay? And that reason was he was set to get more midfield time. He blitzed it in the Amy series. And whilst he didn't see as many CBAs as I would have liked to have seen, he still attended 33%, right? So Collingwood got absolutely belted by the Bulldogs. They lost the possession count by 150 and they didn't really have the ball in their forward half very often. That meant Jordan couldn't really get his hands on the ball around the stoppage and forward a centre. And whilst he scored 61 points, which isn't bad, if he'd kicked three goals instead of three behinds, he would have scored mid to high 70s, which is not a bad result. I'm thinking this week, if you've got Rao, Dangerfield, James Harms, one of these guys that is out for an extended period, then... Degoe is one that you can comfortably hold this week and see how he goes again. If you're in a luxury position though, I think Jordan is one that you could potentially get rid of because even if he does have a good game this week, his break even at 99 means he's not really going to generate any cash in the short term and therefore a sideways move to a Caldwell or Stevenson might allow you to make an extra 100k over the next three weeks for a similar scoring output. The next guy that I suggest you hold is Jordan Clark. So Jordan's a guy that heavily relies on outside ball and Adelaide unexpectedly showed up to play and piled the pressure on early. There was lots of gang tackles and Geelong weren't able to move the ball freely they weren't able to get their cheap possessions like they usually do, and therefore Clark suffered because of this. With Menegola potentially not playing this week, Dangerfield not playing this week, Clark's job security should be safe, and I expect Geelong to bounce back this weekend, and more ball on the outside should mean that Clark is able to score better. He managed to score 135 off 66% time on ground in the Amy series, so he's certainly capable of scoring. I just think he needs another chance in a game where it's better suited. Geelong get to play their way a bit more to really see Clark shine as a player. He's one that I'll be holding this week. So just to recap quickly, the three rookies that I would be targeting this week if you don't have them. Number one, Errol Goulden. Number two, James Jordan. Number three, James Rowe. But if you also don't have Tom Powell, which most people do, but if you don't have him, he's also a priority that I would be looking to chase this week. In terms of mid-price players, I think Hind is the best option, followed by Oleg Markov, Jaden Stevenson, Jai Caldwell, and then last, I think Lockie Scholl is the next best option as a mid-price player. In terms of premiums, I wouldn't really be looking at anyone early on. I think it's important to generate cash early to enable you to get that team value up and therefore enable you to get the upgrades quicker earlier. So I wouldn't be looking at... I've had a few people message me about guys like Andrew McGrath, for example, the issue with that is that the likelihood that he's going to be a top eight mid is low this year. And so you're paying a top eight midfield price for him when reality is he's probably not going to be there for you all year. And at that price, you'd want him to be. So I think it's better to hold off on guys like that. Wait for some of these premiums that had a poor showing in round one, like your Adams and your Gaff who are proven top eight midfielders to come down a little bit. And then in three weeks time, potentially jump on those guys at a cheaper price. I think that's a better way to approach things. 
if you were to go Dangerfield to a premium and that was the option you wanted to take, the two guys that I recommend are Jackson McRae. Whilst he's super high in price, I personally think he's still under price. Based off the fact he's averaged 122 before, he's priced roughly at 115 currently, and I think he'll be getting back to that 120 mark this season. He also provides a week-in, week-out captain option if that's something that you're looking for. The other premium option that I quite like is Josh Dunkley. So with Trelaw back in the side, we were able to get a complete idea of the Bulldogs midfield mix and that entailed Dunkley had a pretty strong grip on a position inside which is what we needed to see in order to suggest that he could get back to previous performance levels. I think a 110 average for Dunkley based off what I've seen is certainly possible and an average around there puts him probably in calculations to be the best forward come year's end, or definitely in the top two. So price just under 100 or around that mark, there's value there, and having the forward dual position status means that he's certainly one that I can consider jumping on sooner rather than later at that more premium price tag. In terms of the moves that I'm looking to make, I'd expressed my trade plans in the last video that I made, and since then I haven't changed what I'm planning to do, all right? So I'll flash what that looks like up on the screen so you guys can see. This may be subject to change depending on what happens on Friday night with the teams for Saturday, okay? So I'm a little bit worried that Flynn might not play for GWS this week due to him coming off with an ankle injury last week. And whilst he came back on the field to play, I'm a little bit hesitant as they may look to rest him this week, make sure he's all good, keep him fit for the rest of the year. So I don't want to take a chance and cop a donut. And so if Paul Hunter is named, on Friday night for St Kilda to play on the Saturday, then I'll most likely go ahead with the current trades that I have planned. If he is not, then Meek being named on a Sunday potentially, Flynn being named on a Sunday potentially, that's going to mean that I'm going to be going into the later part of the round not knowing if they're playing if I go ahead with my potential trades that I've just shown you guys. That's a risk that I probably won't be taking and therefore if Hunter's not named on Saturday, I'll probably be changing my trade plans. As I expressed earlier, I think Jordan Degoe will bounce back. I think he's definitely a hold option for those who aren't as fortunate as myself. But me not having harms, Rao, Dangerfield, I already have all the good cash cows in Goulden, Jordan, Rowe, etc. I'm in a really luxury position this week, and therefore I'm purely jumping off to Goey, not because I don't think he's going to score well this week, but I think guys like Caldwell and Stephenson will score similar, but they'll make a lot more money in the short term. So therefore, that's a move that I'm potentially going to make this week. So in summary, guys, I think that this week you want to be focusing on building value. Don't worry about sideways in poor performing premiums. You want to fix your rookies up. Potentially, if you've got rookies on the bench that aren't playing, get those to some of the guys that I mentioned earlier in the video. That's going to really put you in a better position come later in the year. Focus on the mid prices that are going to generate money. And just remember that AFL fantasy is a long game, okay? So whilst you may be giving up a little bit of points earlier in the year, come round six, you'll be in a much better position. You'll be able to upgrade your team faster and you'll be able to get these higher scoring players into your team and catch the points back up in the second half. So that's just my advice this week. 
with what you should do with your trades. If you've liked this video, drop a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content. Drop a comment below if you've got any questions. Until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special.